Hello Legends. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Postgres chat memory and Superbase vector store for your AI agents. So you can run RAG systems. Uh, we're also gonna be looking at a very basic RAG pipeline. So we're gonna upload a file into our Superbase database so we can actually immediately query it and just see how this you know, start to end process looks and works. Um, but this RAG pipeline is extremely basic. There's a lot more sophisticated pipelines that you can build out, especially for different file types and different structures of data, like if you're working with a PDF or an Excel file. So if you want to see anything more like built out here, please let me know in comments below. But the purpose of this video is actually to dive into um, setting up these credentials uh, and these systems. So what is Postgres and what is Superbase? So Postgres is a database management system. Now you can think of this like an engine in a car. The engine on its own will not be able to do anything, but when you put it into a car, you're, you're actually able to drive that car, get to places and do things. So Superbase is a backend as a service, which is built on top of Postgres, but this essentially provides the tools and infrastructure for your Postgres uh, database system. So uh, you can think of this like the shell of the car, the uh, wheels on the car, the steering wheel, all that stuff that you need in order to make that engine actually work and do things. That's what Superbase is. Okay, so I'm actually gonna delete this entire canvas. I'm gonna remove my credentials and start from absolute scratch, but this is the end picture that we're gonna be building out here together. All right, I'm gonna come back to this in just a second. Okay, so I'm on a brand new canvas. Now let's actually start building out our AI agent. So the first thing I wanna do is actually have a trigger to start this workflow, which is just gonna be a chat message. So we're gonna be interacting with this as if we're having a chat directly with the AI agent. I'm gonna choose this AI agent node and I'm just gonna exit out of here. For the chat model, I'm just gonna choose open AI chat model, keep it as it is. It's not super important right now. Now for memory, I'm gonna to go to uh, Postgres chat memory. Uh, and then from here, I'm gonna go across to uh, select credentials. I'm gonna go create new credential. And we have to pause right now. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video on how to actually set up your uh, Superbase database. Oh, sorry, your Superbase project, because that's what we're gonna be plugging into Postgres. So like I said before, this is the engine. We actually need the tools and infrastructure around that engine to actually run the system. And we're gonna be using Superbase to do that. Now over in Superbase, um, you guys have to first create your account. So when you're creating your account, you're gonna have an option to actually choose which tier you wanna be on. It's gonna initially default to free, which you should just use the free tier. Um, and actually I use Superbase for a lot of my client work. I'm always on the free tier and I always push the free tier for all of my clients. Um, the best thing about Superbase is it makes user authentication super easy. So this, this is like a bit of an aside, but if you're building user apps for your uh, clients and they wanna have multiple people actually logging in and um, into their app to have like their own private version of whatever they wanna see, um, you can actually use Superbase to manage the user authentication and, it, and Superbase makes it extremely easy. So I'm not gonna get into that right now, um, but this is a great database to work with more, you know, more than just for this uh, RAG system and NAN. So once you guys create your account, the next page that you're gonna see immediately after is not this dashboard, but you're gonna be seeing uh, this page here. So we have create a new project and uh, I'm actually in my main organization. So whatever you called your organization, you're gonna see it here. I'm just gonna call this bar project two. Uh, choose a strong password. So I'm just gonna go, and I'm gonna copy this password. Now this password, let's just take this immediately and put it into the credentials. That's the password that we need for this project. Um, and then just choose the region that's closest to you and click on create new project. This creation process might take a few minutes. So I'm gonna come back when this project has been created. Okay, and when your project is finished being set up, you're gonna be taken to this page over here and just wait until you see this green light here for project status. And that just means that we're good to go um, to keep setting up this system. So the next thing we need to do is click on this little connect button over here. And we're gonna go to this drop down type and just choose uh, PSQL. We're gonna scroll down until we get to transaction puller. And for transaction puller, let me just zoom in. We have this long string over here. So if I just slide across, you can see there's a bunch of different information in this uh, field. So the first is that we have the H for host, which is just gonna be this entire section. And now I'm gonna copy this, go back across to N8N. And for host, I'm just gonna paste that right into here. Next, we need the database. So back in here, I'm gonna swipe, uh, swipe across. And then I see D for database is Postgres, which is already set up for us by default in N8N, but just to kind of keep things uniform. I'm gonna paste it into here as well. For user, let's go back into this line and let's find the U, so U for user. I'm just gonna copy uh, this entire end of the string. Let's go back into NAN and for user, let's paste this into here. Uh, we already put the password in from when we were first setting up our project, so that's already set up. And then we need to scroll down to the bottom and find port. So back here, let's go to port, uh, which is denoted by the P. Copy this and paste it into here. Now I'm gonna hit control V and for our account name, you can make this a little bit more specific if you want, um, but I've already uh, deleted my previous credentials. So I'm gonna stick with this. I'm gonna hit save. And after we save, it actually tests the connection and it's been successfully 
uh, tested, which means everything is good to go. All right, and that's it. Now, if I just zoom into here, you see that there is a pre-existing table name. This is by default when you're, uh, when you're using this node and it's n8n underscore chat underscore histories. So we just set up our project and we've plugged in our credentials into n8n. And if I go back into here, I'm just gonna click out of here, go to this left panel and go on table editor. And then you can see that we actually have no tables in our database. So now in order for us to create this table, I'm just gonna click out of here and I'm just gonna go to open chat and just send a message into the chat. And it's gonna pre-configure our table using this module um, into our super base database. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna say, hi there. And now everything's been done successfully. If I go back into my super base project, hit refresh. And now we have a table over here, which is NAN underscore chat underscore histories. And we have the first message or first messages from our interaction. So the first is type human, which is the message that I just sent in um, directly into that chat interface. And then the response is type AI and it's hello, how can I assist you today? So back in NAN over here, that's what we've just done. I've messaged in saying hi there. And then the response is hello, how can I assist you today? And that response was just generated by this AI module in general, but the interaction is logged in Superbase using this Postgres chat memory module. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is actually install RAG. So we've just, we've just got chat memory for ourselves. The next thing we wanna do is actually install uh, a Superbase uh, vector store. So we can actually upload files and then query the files when we're having conversations um, with our agent. So the first thing we need to do is go and create a new credential. So I'm gonna go create new credentials. Okay, and to set up these credentials, we just need the host URL and the service role secret key. So I'm gonna go back to Superbase. I'm gonna go across this column here and click on project settings. I'm gonna click into the data API. And then we need to copy across this URL over here, and then this service role secret key. So I'm gonna copy this URL, paste it into host, back in Superbase, reveal the key, copy the key, and then paste it into uh, this field over here. Hit save. And uh, just like before, the connection is gonna be tested. In our case, it's successful. Okay, and the next thing we need to do is set up the vector store in our Superbase. So I'm gonna click on docs over here. I'm gonna scroll down and click on quick start for, getting, uh, for setting up your vector store. And then I'm gonna copy this SQL command. And then across in Superbase, I'm gonna to go to this left panel, click on SQL editor, paste that entire command into here. And that's gonna set up our vector store in Superbase. Then go over to here and just click run. Give it a few seconds to run and complete. All right, awesome, it's done. And now if I go back to table editor, I'm gonna see my, um, my actual vector store now, which is just called documents. So let's go back to N8N, and now I'm gonna be choosing the table name from here. It's gonna refresh. I'm gonna be choosing documents. Let's just call this Bart's underscore automotive underscore knowledge base. That's pretty uh, terrible spelling. I just fix it up. Okay, and for description, I'm just gonna say, use this vector store to answer FAQs about Bart's automotive. Whoops, there we go. We've already chosen that we're using the documents vector store. And then from here, we're actually good to go. So I'm just gonna click out of this. And now uh, for our embedding model, uh, we actually need to choose. So basically when a user asks a query, so when we're actually interacting with the chat interface, we're gonna be sending a query in plain English. But in order for us to actually uh, take that question and then retrieve an answer from our vector store, which is vectorized, which is basically a series of numbers, um, we need to use an embeddings model that's gonna turn our plain English query into a vectorized query. Uh, so that it can actually communicate with that vector database. So we're just gonna keep it default for now and choose text embedding three small. And now we're uh, set up and good to go. The only thing we need to do now is actually upload a document into our vector store so that we can actually query this entire system. So uh, I'm just gonna disconnect this. I'm gonna show you a very quick and easy way to upload a document to your vector store. Um, I'm gonna double click into the settings. I'm gonna go add field, allow file uploads, and then allow file uploads here. I'm gonna click out of it. And uh, now when you're actually chatting with this agent on the bottom right hand corner um, in the chat panel, you can see there's actually a file upload button. And that's what we're gonna be using to upload our first file into our vector store. So let's go to here and let's type in Superbase vector store. And I'm gonna say uh, add document to vector store. So let's go for our account. Okay, it's already pre-selected. We're gonna be using insert documents. We're gonna choose the actual documents vector store that we've just built out. Uh, we need the, an embedding model and then a document processing model as well. So for the embedding model, we're gonna be choosing the exact same as before, which is the embedding three. And then for our document processing, we're just gonna be using the uh, default data loader. And I'm just gonna be choosing binary data. And this is gonna be pulling out that binary data, which is the basically the file that I uploaded in the chat window. It's gonna pull all that information and it's gonna run it through a process and basically upload that 
um, data into that vector store as well. So for our text splitter, I'm just going to choose recursive as well. Uh, I'm not going to edit the chunk size or the chunk overlap. There's a lot more sophistication in this process, more than we need for this video. Uh, but for now, let me just uh, upload a uh, file into this chat. So we got Bart's Automotive. Let me open this and I'm just going to say hi there. Hit enter, upload the file. And now the actual process ran. It took the file and I uploaded it into our vector store. So if we go back to Superbase and we go into Documents, Refresh, There we go, we've actually just uploaded our uh, information. We've got two different bits of content over here. So the first bit of content, which is Bart's Automotive, which is a bunch of FAQs that we had. And then the same document was basically chunked down into a separate, um, a separate uh, upload into here. And just to show you, this is the actual document that we uploaded. So what services do you offer? Um, what are the services cost over here? And then we have some other information, like what's the actual address, what's the time and everything else. So I'm just gonna take a question and I'm gonna say, what is the oil change and basic service cost? So that's 149, that's what the answer should be from our system. I'm gonna go back into NAN. I'm gonna delete that connection and plug it into here. Whoops. Let's plug it into here. Now I'm gonna reset this chat. There we go. And I'm gonna say, how much does a this thing cost? And we should get 149. So we've just queried and we had our response back here. So there you go, guys. This is the uh, complete end-to-end -end system. Uh, once again, if you have much more complicated um, like knowledge resources that you want to upload to your vector database, uh, I don't think the system will be sufficient. So just please comment below if you want to see anything more sophisticated. But we've just gone through. We've connected the Postgres chat memory to our agent. We've also hooked up a database. We've actually uploaded a file into our database. And then we've queried the system at the very end. Um, so now we have a complete end-to-end -end rack system built out. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy. See ya.